I want to bring in Zach and Mark for reaction on the Kyrie Irving story. Mark, the Nets have been outwardly supportive of Irving's process, but what do these reports of the team unwilling to bend all the way, for example, not moving their practices for Irving, tell you, Mark? Well, what it tells me is that it's bigger than you. Uh, I remember when I covered the Denver Nuggets um, and Nick Van Exel, he convinced Antonio McDyess to sign this six-year, $67 million deal in 1999. Two years later, Van Exel asked for a trade, ends up getting a trade to Dallas uh, in 2002, but McDyess is left behind. And ultimately, he ended up getting a trade, too. And years later, I talked to Van Exel, and he said, you know what, one of my biggest regrets, if not the biggest in my career, is I convinced McDyess to to sign, and then I asked to get out. And in the Kyrie situation, he convinced Durant to come there. He convinced Harden to come there. He convinced Steve Nash to come there. It's bigger than you. It affects more than you. It affects you from a medical standpoint with your teammates and with the league, and it affects your team. And these guys came there for you. So ultimately, I wonder down the line, will he have these same regrets that my stance, uh, and, he, and it's, hey, it's his prerogative to have his stance, but ultimately it's bigger than him, and it's really, really affecting this team that has the biggest championship aspirations. Zach, your thoughts. I mean, Irving could lose game checks approximately $380,000 for every home game he misses. Do you ever think Sean Marks is like, even in, in like when he lays down to go to sleep, do you ever think he thinks to himself, it was kind of nice when we were like a frisky 42-win team with D'Angelo Russell and <laughs> Joe Harris and Karis LeVert. We were like the feel-good story of the NBA. Look, this is a huge story. As Woj said, they were optimistic before the season. I kept hearing, it'll happen, it'll happen, it'll happen. It hasn't happened. The idea of Kyrie Irving as a part-time player and a away game only player and a away game practice player. I mean, like, what are we even talking about? Is that tenable? I don't think the Nets have even had a conversation where they've concluded, is that tenable and is it not tenable? Can you imagine if they start having trade discussions about Kyrie Irving if he does not get vaccinated and become a full-time player? What do those conversations look like? What's his trade value? What do the other teams think? This is an absolutely unprecedented situation. As Kevin Durant commented today at practice, there's still hope that it resolves itself. I mean, hopefully sooner rather than later for the Nets' sake. But this is a team that is the overwhelming favorite to win the championship fully loaded. Without him? They may still be the slight favorite to win the championship. I have the beholder on that one, but they're right there with the Bucks. maybe the Lakers. They lose all their margin for error when one of their stars is out. Yeah, in terms of this is tenable, the, the team will be away from home for only one day the rest of the preseason, Monday for a game at Philadelphia. And look, with a six-game homestand starting the second week of the season, He'll be away from his teammates for 11 days before he can work out with them again. And then during one stretch in November and December, the Nets are home for 20 out of 26 days. So whether or not this is tenable um, is going to be an ongoing question. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.